Hi guys, this is Docker Crash Course Introduction. In this video, I'm gonna give you an introduction to Docker. This video is gonna be based on this blog post uh, with the same title. It goes over some common commands uh, that I find um, myself using more often than others. And, and I guess I introduce it by saying Docker is kind of like Git. If you can get a couple commands, then you can get Docker. Um, that I promise is the only lame joke I'll make. Okay, so the um, summary here, I cover the lifecycle commands. So lifecycle commands, that's just a term I made up. Uh, I'm just grouping some commands together that uh, seem to be, uh, that makes sense to group together. And then the second set of commands are the registry commands. Uh, these are commands used to kind of build an image, list the image, and then push up to a registry. Then lastly, I go over some common commands. Basically, they're just cleanup commands that I find handy. Uh, the Docker file for this is on GitHub. Here's the link, and here's the Docker file. So this Docker file uh, starts off with an Amazon Linux version 2 image, then it installs some tools, and then uh, it copies over install Apache script. It changes it to make it executable, and then it runs it, uh, and, and that script installs Apache. Here's what the script looks like. The script basically installs Apache with yum, okay? Let's see, going back to this, lifecycle command. So let's uh, let's finally run our first Docker command here. So here's Docker run. I'm just gonna go to my terminal here, hope you can see, and then go on Docker run. So Docker run, so like that, I just went from my Linux machine into a Docker container in a bash shell. That's what that command did. Let's uh, break this down. So Docker run, that's the command. And then here's the bash shell. So that's the command that I, I told it, Docker to execute uh, and throw me into a bash shell. And then here is the image. This is where you provide the image. Uh, and this is an image that I built and pushed to Docker Hub uh, a little bit earlier. Uh, and then here are the flags. So these flags are um, are, are useful. RM is this is a convenience flag. And it basically it says when I exit out of this container, automatically remove and clean up the Docker images or the, the containers uh, for me automatically. So that's I find that very handy. And then TI, I especially find this handy and pretty much always use it. Uh, TI is uh, TTY and I stands for interactive. Basically, that makes the shell behave like a regular interactive shell, which is what I uh, find myself doing um, uh, often. Okay, so I'm in the container now, and this container is based on this image, and this image has Apache installed, right? So let's see where I'm at. Right? Let's explore the uh, the image. So this is what Apache, uh, this has Apache, all right? And then this has some configs here. Uh, so let's kind of look at this welcome config. Let's see what that's all about. So uh, I'm looking at this config, config here because we're gonna kind of be using this a little bit later to demonstrate uh, some things. Okay, so it looks like this config has a directive that says, look, if there's no index, serve this file and user share HTTP no index index.html. Okay, so uh, uh, make a mental note of that. Now we're gonna exit out of this container. Okay, uh, so now we're back onto my Linux machine. All right, so next uh, Docker command is still Docker run, uh, except with slightly different flags. So I'm gonna run it right now. And it started Docker container, except this time in the background or detach. That's what this dash D stands for. Dash D means start this Docker container and detach it. And notice in this one, I didn't provide bash. Uh, so when you don't provide a command, Docker is gonna run the command that was the default command in the Docker file. So let's take a look at the default command in the Docker file. Uh, it's right here. Remember, it starts the HTTP server in the foreground. So that's um, that's uh, the command is running right now. Basically, the HTTP server is running in that Docker container right now. And then there's another option here that's a little bit different, that dash capital P. Dash capital P, what that stands for is publish all ports. So Docker, in the Docker file here, let's look for expose. It exposes port 80 because that's the uh, default port that HTTP is listening to. So uh, on within the Docker container, that's the port that's going to be listened to. But outside the Docker container, uh, on the host uh, instance or the um, the host OS, uh, it's going to be uh, listening to another port, and that's what this dash p does. So the next command is going to show you all this. So Docker ps this uh, is going to show you all the running active containers. And see right here under ports is a little bit hard to read, but right here that I'm gonna highlight is showing port 80 is that's the port that's being listened to inside the Docker container, and this random port right here 32785 that's the port that's listening to the host. So, so that means if I curl this guy right for that title, 
I should see it. There he goes, right? And, the, and the, I'm at the host still. So this actually leads perfectly into the next uh, command. So we cover Docker run, we cover Docker PS, Docker exec. So Docker exec is a really cool command. It allows you to jump into the container. It's kind of like SSH into a machine, kind of. Uh, so Docker exec dash TI. So you want the shell to be interactive again. Um, so I always use the option. Then you could refer to the pretty name down here. It's the last column where you can use the container ID. It doesn't really matter which one you use. Okay. Uh, and then you have to provide a command. So bash, if you don't, it's going to error. Watch, it's going to error. So, so you need uh, to provide the bash command. Okay. All right. So now I'm inside the container, right? And like I said, I curl it from the outside. So inside the container, I should be able to actually see it um, listening to port 80. There it is, listen to port 80. Okay. So let's just curl it again. Localhost now because I'm in the container um, and then port 80 grep for uh, title. So there it's the exact same thing. I'm just inside the container this time. So uh, let's see. Uh, there's the file user shared. I think it was share HTTP um, no index and uh, index. So that's the file that's serving. So let's modify it. Let's go in here and change that test to a test two. Ooh, let's put a little space there. Okay. So let's curl it again. So I'm curling it and there's test two. Uh, now I'm gonna go outside the container. I'm gonna go, we'll go back to the host exit and now I'm gonna curl from the host and there's test two. So I just modified a live running container. I hop in there, I modify a file and then I jump back out and curl it from the outside and you see that the file's been modified live. Okay, so that's what exec does. Uh, pretty cool, very useful command. Next command is docker stop. So uh, we've been running docker uh, with this rm flag, right? So this arm flag check out. So arm flag, what it does is will automatically remove the container uh, if uh, I stop it. So let's go ahead and stop the container now. So Docker PS, Docker stop. Then I'm gonna grab the Docker ID here, stop it, Docker PS. Okay, now PS is gone, right? Now let's run the container. Um, let me just find the command without the RM. Okay, so run the container without RM. Okay, now Docker PS. It's running right there. Docker stop there. So now it, Docker container has been stopped. Uh, PS, so it's gone, but not really. If you use the dash A flag, then it's gonna list all containers, including stop containers and see if the container stop. Now, remember all the other containers I started with dash dash RM. So they were automatically not just stopped, but removed. This one is stopped, but it hasn't been removed. So you have to now manually remove it with RM with the container ID there. So let, that should have gotten rid of it and does. There you go. So that covers, I think, all the lifecycle commands. Yeah, that covers the lifecycle commands. Okay, so now we're at the registry commands. So the registry commands, uh, it's basically building an image, listing the images, and pushing up the registry. So let's go do that. So here's the Docker file again. Let's, let's take a brief look. I'm just catting it. And now I'm gonna go Docker run, uh, oh, no, build. Uh, dash T for the image tag name that I want to use, Tungaru Apache uh, Tutorial, and then dot. Dot stands for the current directory or context to send to the Docker daemon. So I'm going to run that command. And what it's doing right now is basically it's building the Docker, uh, uh, Docker image and it's finished building. I already built this image, so it did it really fast. Uh, so now Docker images is going to list the images. There's the image. And then basically it said nine minutes ago because I've already built this image nine minutes ago, and when I ran that command again, it didn't detect any changes, and Docker was smart enough to say, okay, I don't really need to rebuild this image. I'm not gonna waste any of my time. So anyway, so, but that's how you list the images, and now uh, the last command is how you push the images. So you, you wanna grab uh, the Docker repository right there, and then the tag that you wanna push, and then you wanna run Docker push, and then it should push up the image or registry. Now, I've already logged in Docker Hub, so, I was able to push, but if you haven't logged in Docker Hub before, it's going to kind of complain, and then you have to run Docker login, and then you have to provide your Docker Hub credentials. And uh, there's a bunch of tutorials to kind of do that, uh, show you how to do that too. Okay, so those are the registry commands. Uh, and finally, the clean commands. Okay, so usually when you're playing around with Docker, you eventually end up with a lot of cruff, like a lot of just like garbage that you, it's kind of annoying. Uh, so you just want to kind of clean up. So I'm going to show you kind of, I'm gonna start, start up with a couple containers, okay? Uh, without the RM here. So I started three containers. Um, they're all right there running, okay? And now what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna stop the containers. Uh, it's, 
And one way you could do that is you can go Docker stop and then pass in each of the container IDs. Uh, IDs. Uh, another way you could do that is you do Docker PS uh, with the dash uh, uh, kind of Q. It will only sh uh, uh, list the first column there. So what you could do is you could do that dash Q uh, dash A uh, for all because you're going to need that when you need to. You have to stop containers and then you have to remove the containers. So you could actually do this. You could do Docker stop and then Docker stop takes a list of IDs. So if you do that, do do it stop all the containers. Now check this out. Docker PS, not there, remember, dash A was gonna show it to you, but then now you wanna do a dash Q to kind of make sure that you know you only list the first column. Now you can do a Docker remove. So that's what that command's all about. So that's the first command. That's a way to quickly remove all those like those garbage containers that are kind of annoying. Sometimes, um, so I'm gonna kind of start a bunch of Docker containers again. Run, run. Sometimes you wanna stop, let's say only the exit containers, right? Because uh, look, if you do a dash uh, A, it's gonna uh, list all the containers. Uh, or oh, uh, how about I stop a container first? Let me stop one of these containers. There you go. Now you do a PS. All right, that shows you only two containers right now, right? But if you do a PS dash A, doesn't show you uh, three containers, including the uh, exit a container six seconds ago. So I let's say you only want to remove the exit container. Well, one way to kind of do that is you grab for exit it and then you use ah, ah, awk. So there's exit right there. And now you can use awk and then you print the uh, first column. All right. And now you could now you have it. You, you could stop or you could remove the exit container only and keep all your running containers. So I just removed my exit container. But I kept all my running containers and let me do the dash A too. So you can see only two containers kind of uh, running there. So, and then sometimes you end up with a lot of image corrupt too. You build a lot of images and you're like, okay, I have all these images and they're, it's just garbage. It's kind of annoying. So uh, you have to use RMI to remove images. Um, but what I usually do is I usually use Docker images. Then I rep for a, a specific image name and then I remove it. So let's say Docker images there. Let me say I grep for, uh, let's say Apache, uh, Apache, right? And then I now use Hawk to print the third column there. And then I could actually run this now through Docker RMI to remove images and then I will remove all the images there. I'm not gonna run it here, but that's how you would do that, okay? And I think, uh, yeah, that wraps it up. That covers all the commands here. That covers the lifecycle commands, the registry commands, and some combo cleanup commands. Uh, these, uh, uh, summer, uh, summary of these commands are also available in the slide deck here. I will link it to the YouTube description below. Uh, and uh, hopefully you found that helpful. Hopefully, uh, uh, if you found that video helpful, please like it and share it to encourage more content like this. Uh, if you like videos like this and you want to watch more videos like this, subscribe. And thanks for watching, guys. Cheers. You have a great night.